Before the league started, aspiring NHL stars would have to leave the state for the chance to get noticed. I think it's only going to get better. You know, more kids are going to start to decide to go to different schools because of the hockey programs. Um, but, you know, you could probably travel around the U.S. and say, which team's from California? And you probably wouldn't be able to see. And uh, But it's good because I think, you know, you, you see that some local kids have been drafted out of California who've obviously had to go somewhere else to play. And wouldn't it be great someday a local kid plays local high school, goes on to college or whatever, and then gets drafted by the Ducks. So uh, that'd be a real success story right there. Now, the NHL is starting to take notice. Four of the top 78 players from the 2010 NHL draft were from Southern California, including Emerson Edom, who grew up in Long Beach and was taken 29th overall by the Ducks. The Ducks picking me, uh, I'm a California born hockey player. I just have so much opportunity uh, coming into this organization, not only growing the, the game of hockey in California, but uh, also you know what I present to the Duck organization. I just, it couldn't be a better fit for me. Being the first Californian, definitely deserving, and uh, Emerson Edom could, could have got picked there as well. And, uh, an honor for sure to share this with my friends, uh, friends and family in California. It's unbelievable. It just goes to show you what how much uh, investment there has been in development, uh, in building rinks, um, in kids getting ice time. More kids are playing, so now you're starting to see, you know, with Emerson Edom, with guys like Bo Bennett, uh, you're seeing elite level talent now that's being developed. It's only going to increase uh, as the years go on. Um, you see the kids here now today. More guys getting drafted, but the teams that are out there in midget and junior hockey are, are good hockey teams that are going to other parts of the country, United States, going to Canada and, and winning hockey games and being good teams and it's just it speaks volumes for the hockey and the grassroots that's done in California by the teams here. Yeah I was at the draft that day when he got drafted and uh, I was a little bit you know surprised to see that come up and uh, you know it's just you realize that you can actually make it you don't have to be born in Minnesota to play in the NHL so it's uh, opened my eyes a little. After completing only its third year, the Anaheim Ducks High School Hockey League is already starting to see the talent pool grow, but there are some challenges. You know, you got to keep it. You got to keep it growing. You know, we, we still need more rinks. We still need uh, more kids involved. You know, kids out here, the best athletes play baseball. They play football. They play soccer. And you know, trying to get the best athletes to play hockey and is, is harder because of the cost of the game. So with more rinks, I think we could lower costs and you know, just get more kids involved in general. It's a warm Saturday afternoon in February. Now in several chilled rinks across Southern California, you can find high school athletes playing hockey thanks to the Anaheim Ducks. Well, there's no question without their support, um, there would be no league. I mean, it's a wonderful thing they're doing for uh, the community and, and especially for these kids. The Samuelis have done a great job in, in growing the sport. And they, they've done a great job as owners. They've done a great job in the community. You know, as, as, a, as a father who has a son that plays hockey, we owe a lot to what the Samuelis have done. I think it, we're really moving in a fast pace, which is a great thing to see. You know, we don't want to put the cart before the horse type of thing, but uh, hopefully in four or five years, uh, you know, we can be back here watching a, a really high level of competition for high school hockey. We have seven teams. Hopefully next season we'll add, we're hoping three or four more teams. But I think once we get to that 20 team mark, 25 team mark, is then I think we'll seriously think about going to CIF for sanction. To start on, yeah, start at noon on Saturday and end at nine, eight or nine o'clock with high school games all day would be great. That's the ultimate goal, I think.